My pleasure to introduce the, the next speaker, uh, Professor Thomas uh, Binder, um, who's Professor of the Royal Academy of Fine Arts Schools of Architecture, Design and Conservation. Um, he's part of the CIBE uh, Research Centre engaged um, on open, with open design collaborators and participatory design in the context of uh, design anthropology, interaction design and social innovation. His research includes contributions to methods and tools for experimental design research and open innovation processes with a particular emphasis on participation and learning. Um, he's contributed to several books such as Social Thinking, Software Practice, uh, Searching the Digital Battles. I uh, had the pleasure of seeing the, uh, I think that uh, was an exhibition that went with that at some point. I'm sure you'll explain later. Uh, rehearsing the Future and a number of other publications. So, my pleasure um, to introduce Thomas and the floor is now yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for inviting me here uh, to talk about uh, design as everyday theatre. And I put uh, empathic in a parenthesis in front of it and have also been thinking about what it is with empathy, which I think is very important to the design practices that I'm part of, and still something which, uh, when you are, as I, have been engaged with participatory design, co-design for a long time, you could say we've sort of uh, decentered ourselves as designers and design researchers from the design process. So it's not we as designers or design researchers necessarily who are to be empathic. I think, I guess we have, but I think what I'll try to get at in this presentation is that uh, we perhaps have to get empathic to our future selves, to borrow a, borrow a phrase that Enkeli brought up earlier. We have to be empathetic to that possible, which kind of stands in front of us, not only us in front of us as designers or design researchers, but as this uh, coming together of different stakeholders who in uh, co-design processes are engaging with the possible. But as it was said in the introduction, I'm a professor in co-design in, in Copenhagen, have been working for quite some years with participatory design and co-design, and recently also being part of a, a new master program in co-design where we are also uh, grappling with similar questions as Adam brought up earlier. What is it that we do as we co-design? Is it process? Is it product? Is it both? What is it that we engage with as we engage with collaborative design? I suggest it's a mutual engagement with the possible. And I uh, suggest that this mutual engagement with the possible is a sort of everyday theater in several senses of the word. First, a little bit about the possible. For designers projecting into the far that has been the tradition of design, I think we are moving into a situation where what is really of interest to us is uh, a sort of here and now, just a little bit in front of us. So when I talk about the possible, the possible is not one possible possibility among many. It's not just the possible as something less good than what we dreamed of, but it's actually something about how the possibility to act and know the world that we are in, how that can sort of be something that stands in front of us as something that we can, can uh, grab and uh, engage with. What that means, I will try to illustrate through a little look into uh, two projects that I've been uh, involved in recently. Uh, and I'll say, a little bit sort of about, uh, about uh, the context of these projects and some of the things that we encounter. The first project is about uh, senior citizens in Copenhagen, a collaboration about how to support senior citizens in maintaining and perhaps <coughs> extending the social networks in which they live their lives. And getting engaged with this project through uh, an invitation from the Copenhagen municipality who had some very strong evidence that, uh, that uh, social networks is perhaps the most uh, healthy thing to have. Uh, 
And, and having statistics about how elderly uh, also in, if after having been in uh, some sort of uh, treatment, re, uh, medical treatment, for example, that how they need to, to, uh, to find communities in which they can exercise good uh, everyday practices. So having this as a starting point where there was definitely a problem, there was a constellation, at least a constellation of municipality and co-design researchers who uh, wanted to engage with this, you could say the very first uh, challenge for such a collaboration and also a challenge for many other collaborative design engagements that is to, to uh, identify and address your collaborators. We sort of set out to, to uh, engage with the elderly and uh, one thing very uh, striking here is that there's really not many elderly out there or statistics tell you there's a lot but when you get to the people that respond to your invitation they are not elderly. I had an interview with an old woman who was part of an association of the elderly in Copenhagen uh, and I had a, a long interview and sort of 45 minutes into the, the interview I realized that the elderly that she was talking about was her recently deceased mother of 93. Uh, it had nothing to do with her. She was Tove, she had a name, she had a, responded to our call. She wanted to be part of something about social networks and exploring sort of what this may be. Uh, and this, that uh, people that we engage in collaborative design, that they don't want to be seen as representatives for someone else. They don't want to be boxed into an idea of, of to our idea of some sort of larger uh, social problem. They want to be addressed as people who come with uh, commitments, tensions, ambitions, want to be met as collaborators in this context. Uh, and this is something we have to respond to. So when we engage with the possible, when we try to bring together people who want to work with us, we have to think of this constellation as a very particular coming together of people who, like us, want to explore how things might be different. <clears throat> This means also that, that, uh, that we are not sort of isolating ourselves in a sort of uh, empty space trying to, to, to uh, be creative about possible solutions. No, we have to understand sort of what it is that the different people we work with, what it is that they bring into to this uh, collaboration. This calls for an empathic engagement. It calls for uh, dialogues through which what is there is uh, revealed and becomes shared among us. Uh, and it calls also for a sensitivity to that the, in this coming together, it's not, a, it's not just a reality out there which is revealed. It's a particular sort of a constellation of the social. It's a particular constellation of the thing that we are dealing with, which kind of comes about as we engage. And I will give you a little example just about this empathic engagement from a conversation that one of my colleagues had with Magrede, who was uh, 91 at the time, living at an elderly home and not so keen on sort of engaging in the, in the common activities at the elderly home. She told uh, my colleague Maria about how she mainly talked a little to her neighbor at the elderly home uh, and then she told a lot about the story of her family, she told about her husband, she told about how she and her husband love to dance and has always loved to dance um, and how dancing has been a dear thing for her in her life. Further down uh, in the conversation, uh, she told about how at a Sunday afternoon one of the employees at the elderly home had asked her up to dance and how this had been the most humiliating experience for her. That she had sort of been dragged to the floor and she had to dance this Sunday afternoon. Marie asked her, why, Marie, why you she just told me how you always love to dance? And then she said, yes, it's precisely because I love to dance. I know I cannot dance anymore. I don't want to be dragged to the floor 
because I know, I know dancing, I love dancing, I don't want to be dragged to the floor. My point with this anecdote is that I think we could, if, uh, in these conversations we learn about all these uh, complex things that makes up the everyday life for every one of us, and where, where, where uh, an a conversation that had stopped at an earlier point would perhaps have led us to think just like the employee at the elderly home, that nothing could be better than trying to get Margrethe to dance. But I think what is important here is that we have to understand that this is it's not us from the outside who have to find out what is, what is there. We have to find a way to engage in which we can sort of uh, not only know the name of each other, but, but to bring in all the, all the complexities and ambiguities of our everyday life experience and make that vivid in the... Um, in the collaboration. And so what is co-design about? Well, co-design is this coming together of different people, but it's not only that. It's also about sort of making tangible these uh, possibilities of agency through which we can act together. And this is perhaps also what I have to bring here, connect to the discussions we've had this morning about restorative practices. In the tradition of participatory and collaborative design, we've sort of learned over the years that what happens as different people come together is not a negotiation. It's also a negotiation, but already in the early days of participatory design, we started to talk about that this kind of a third space that emerges in this coming together. That there's something more than just the negotiation of interest. There's something more than just presenting to each other what kind of experiences we represent. And it's through this more, through this uh, sort of opening up of possibilities for acting together that we can engage uh, with each other and where we can also start to see how we can go to different places. And I think it's this you could say, empathic attitude to this possibility of being somewhere else, which is kind of staged and, and enacted collaboratively. It's through that that we may arrive at new places. But let me make this uh, perhaps uh, more concrete. We've been talking about the uh, context that we work in as a sort of design laboratory. We wanted to think of where the, the space in which uh, co-design happens as, as something different than a design studio because it's not our place. The, the centerpiece in co-design, that is the coming together. And thinking of this coming together as some sort of des design laboratory in which we can uh, explore uh, new directions, new ways to go, that seems to be a more uh, workable and more uh, uh, appropriate uh, way of, of naming this uh, setting. And we also, with the design laboratory, when we, have to, when we are characterizing what happens in this design laboratory, we've been talking about it as, as, as a site of rehearsals, as a setting in which we can rehearse possible futures. So what does this mean? I'll give you some example from another project where we worked again with a sort of very concrete and practical societal challenge, that of uh, recycling and uh, sustainability in relation to waste handling, where we were asked to, to address the problem that uh, recycling, for obvious reasons, has to become better, and we were asked to address it with uh, sensitivity to the kind of partnering between citizens, employees in the waste, waste sector, and um, and the municipalities, and, uh, and thinking of how we could not only find technical solutions, but could work on the sort of the, um, the, uh, the active engagement on the citizen side. So how to set up a design laboratory in such a context, and how to rehearse the future? Broadly speaking, we're talking about this as going on in instead of three recurring steps. 
First, we talk about that there's a, a sort of a staging of collaborative encounters at the heart of co-design. And now I'm not uh, a native speaker of English, but, but uh, if I, as, I, as we get it, we, the notion of encounters has this sort of, um, also has a almost military, I think a military connotations in terms of, of um, kind of by coincidence getting to engage with each other in a sort of, in a, in a very open and unplanned way. And I think there's something about this notion of encounters which I think fits well with the uh, co-design uh, approach. We're stating collaborative account encounters between stakeholders who turn up to, to be part of an exploration. And these collaborative encounters opens up for an exploration of what is facts and what is concerns as we bridge between, as in this case, a municipal officer, <coughs> waste collectors, and a group of designers on site uh, at this place where, where, where waste is collected. Staging such, such collaborative can, encounters in, an, or in a meeting, in a uh, could say ma wide meeting room is very different from staging such encounters at the site where waste is collected. In this particular case, uh, the, the uh, understanding of the municipal officer of what was going on in this particular site and the understanding of the waste collectors was very different. And and actually plays out as we are in front of these waste bins in ways that opens up for talking about waste collection and recycling in quite new ways. And thinking of it also as collaborative encounters is important. I mentioned my own background in participatory design and you could say in participatory design we started to talk about issues of democracy as a question of including more participants in the democratic process. But when we now more and more also talk about this design, still with a democratic ambition, but using the notion of the collaborative, I think it's also to hint at that we are not the same, and we may sort of get to, as we encounter each other in a site like this, we, we may start to think of the world in different ways, but we do not necessarily share this view of, uh, of how the world is, but we are sort of getting together collaboratively around this engagement. Staging such encounters also opening, opening, opens up for invoking what I've called new inhabitable landscapes. In, <clears throat> in the, uh, with the difference of perspectives, the difference of life worlds between the people being brought together, is not something that we have to sort of remedy, but I, but actually a kind of opening in the glitches and soft spots where different understandings are competing, that is also where we can start to think of things emerging in different ways. Not looking back, sort of reflecting on what was wrong, not looking forward to some sort of ideal from uh, some uh, particular stakeholders uh, perspective, but rather sort of exploring what we, as we get together, can start to envision as things that happen differently. And here I'll give you a sort of a small peek into what such a getting together of citizens, municipal officers, waste collectors and designers, how that plays out also in, in formats which heavily relies on what we've learned from looking to theater. <clears throat> what you saw here, including the applause in the end, that is a a uh, garbage collector, a municipal officer, uh, one who works in a call center in the waste industry, and a citizen who is uh, creating, as you can say, a very sort of play playful and sort of easygoing story about sort of how things may be. And it may seem light, and it is light, it is playful, but it's still performed in front of other garbage collectors, other municipal officers, other citizens, and becomes sort of a, uh, a contribution to thinking about how this world that they share, but in which they live in very sort of compartmentalized regions, how that may become something else. And these sort of rehearsals become 
I think the very centerpiece of collaborative design. What is it made of? We heard also earlier that, that the professional designer thinks about sort of what is it that we bring in such a constellation. Well, into this situation comes stories from each of the participants that is prepared also in formats that the co-designer has provided so we can sort of help to expose the, the kind of uh, everyday that we bring in in ways that are sort of sli slightly uh, estranged in such a way that we can, we can work with it together. And then also uh, deliberately choosing formats that doesn't allow, to, allow us to speak to each other in the same sort of professional way where we <coughs> probably in a constellation like, like this speak to each other if, uh, every day, but that we have to explore within a format like the dull scenarios, we have to explore how these things could be, could be different. And such an episode is sort of in itself uh, already on its way to sort of gra grabbing possibilities that we haven't seen before as rehearsals. But there's more to rehearsals. If it's about staging and evoking, it's also about enacting uh, such uh, engagements out on the, on the site, out in the context where we have all the, uh, all the connotations of, of the well-known environment. So enacting the possible so it becomes really sort of actuality, something which is right there is, is, uh, is quite critical uh, in the design laboratory. And I will show you one more uh, small video example to give you a sense of what this could mean. It's from the same project, a slightly different place, uh, where a shop owner and uh, local tenants in a, a, the surrounding housing estate is discussing sort of how recycling uh, of batteries uh, could work out with some sort of a refund from the uh, from the shop. And what I would like you to note in this video, that is again the, the playful atmosphere. What you're seeing is happening in the middle of a shop during opening hours with a lot of other people around. Uh, and uh, let's see how it looks. And perhaps what you noted here also is uh, in the end, Lillian looks out to the camera and says, was it okay? Uh, and, and generally also there's a lot of laughing, there's a lot of playfulness. So one could, I mean, you are probably, many of you also uh, very familiar with working with scenarios of different kinds, video prototypes and so on. What, and, and in one way you could say this is uh, just like this. What I want to uh, add, uh, attract your attention to is the, the sort of the, the playfulness and the improvisation and the sense that at least uh, I hope you can give here is that that this is a, sort of that is, this is precisely a rehearsing of a, of a world which is a little bit between a little bit besides what we have, but also in ways where which is sort of open. It could be like this, but we could also take it a little bit in a different direction. The the tenants, the shop owner, the designers are all sort of playfully improvising, and through this, they are rehearsing new relationships to each other, rehearsing new everyday practices of how to handling batteries. And all this is happening in a sort of, in a, what I call before a third space, a sort of third space which is not derived from clear-cut interests and doesn't have for the individual points to some sort of specific individual act, uh, actions afterwards. This is sort of a small everyday drama in which the world becomes slightly different. <clears throat> Working as designers and design researchers with uh, work like this, we also have to think of what can be carried on from such an everyday drama. Can we sort of cut out insights, document experiences that can sort of be can directly taken uh, to others? Uh, no, so that's that's not as that's that's not as easy. Uh, we have to find ways in which this can sort of be reenacted, both in the sense that it becomes history, 
but also in the sense that it becomes history on top of which we can stand and do, and do new things, rehearse and perform new practices. So not only is what I'm saying is that we in co-design sort of create a sort of a stage in which we can evoke and enact the possible sort of just in front of the here and now where we are right now. We also have to, as we think of co-design, collaborative design in this way, and or thinking of this third space, we also have to be aware that it sort of exists in this moment of improvisation. And that means that we cannot, we cannot sort of stabilize it into insights. We have to know that this kind of learning, this kind of improvisation is precisely what we also have to accommodate as we create things from which this can again evolve. So, uh, so what I've tried to bring to you is this idea of design and perhaps particularly co-design as uh, an everyday, sort of everyday drama, everyday theater in which the new becomes the possible, a sort of here and now slightly shifted from the here and now in which we are now and where we through rehearsals, performances and reenactments are able to uh, install or uh, accommodate a sort of agency that may take us uh, to new places. And as I said in the beginning and what we could perhaps also discuss is that where the empathic uh, attitude lies and I think my take would be that, that empathy is of course necessary as I, as, des as designer or design researchers, meet my collaborators. But first of all, I think the empathic attitude has to do with the way we enter into this uh, moment of opening towards the new that is uh, staged through these uh, encounters. So, please. 